all right all right welcome back so in our last episode we were able to point together the landing page and here is what it looks like so coming back into our figma design we are going to explore the authentication page now so looking at the design we will find out that the structure for the authentication page is quite the same for both sign up and sign in with the only difference being the content within them so yep we have the title we have the description Email and password remains the same, then the button tests, then the extra information. So on that note, I think we have an idea of where I'm going with this. So we're going to have a component for the authentication itself, which we can then use within the login and the sign up page. So without any further ado, let's get into our code and put this out. So here's our code from where we left it. And um, yeah, we can close all this just to clean up the space. So back in here under the component folder, we are going to create a new folder for the all. And this is because a single file would not contain what we want. So we don't want to clutter everything together. And within the alt, we can have the alt.html, then the logics. So just like usual, we are going to make this a standalone component. And because we have an HTML file now, we can make use of the template URL. Then finally, we have the selector. Parts. Now, here we are going to have a spot class spot components. And um, we don't really need the constructor for this, so we can as well just remove it. So for now, we are going to leave things as just a simple HTML contents. Okay, so here we have it up. So coming back into the pages, here we are going to create a new page for the login. So rather, this is going to be a folder. Okay, so within our login, we're going to have two files just as usual. Login.html, then login.ts. Okay. So for this, we are going to start with DTS as usual. So we have add component. So this does not need the selector because we won't be using it any place else. So here, instead, we are going to have imports. And we want to have the art imports, art components. Then also we are going to make use of the router link. Actually, we also need it on the auth component. So let's leave the router link on this for now. It's not very important compared to what we have on the auth component. So let's pull the imports here. So router link makes sense. So let's complete the login. Okay, cool. And now we can come back here. We can have the login and probably just have this within a div. And here we can have the auth. It should be self closing as well and we are good so if we come back to our browser and yep nothing would happen still because we've not really registered that endpoint so let's come back here so we defined the login but not register the endpoint so we can come back to the routes and define a new endpoint so we have path and this time around the path is going to be sign in and the component is going to be the login component. Okay, cool. So the only issue here is that on the home page, if you come back here, the routing is going to sign up, which does not exist yet. So maybe in the future we can still change this back to sign up, but for now, since we have the login, I'm going to change this to sign in. Okay, so let's come back to our browser and test this out. Since there's an error, let's find out what's going on. All right, so the error seems to be self-explanatory. Um, coming back to the routes, we remove the slash in front of it and we'll save. That should fix it. Okay, so we are back. And now if I click on get started, it takes me to the auth page. Okay, so we have things laid out to allow us implement the auth page. And now we can come back to our code and focus on implementing that. So we won't bother about the logics for now. Let's just have the content in place. So before I get started with coding, just a reminder, if we come back to the Figma, this is what we are trying to achieve. And this is a common HTML template, which means I'm pretty sure most of us can build this and we won't dwell too much of our time on trying to do this together. I'm going to go ahead and coin together the HTML content for this and come back to explain things in details.
All right, so here is the structure of things, not stared as well. So you find out that we have a lot of scribble lines, and these are variables we are meant to define on the constructor or the logic side, okay? So we are expecting this as input from wherever is controlling this. So for example, logging, we are expecting the input and so on. So now that we've defined the structure, we can come back to the auth.ts and define this variable. So coming back here, we are going to have input. So we have at input for title, which is going to be, so if we come back to the browser um, here, so we can have a default uh, one. So since we are exploring the login first, then we can have the default information for the login. So when we then go into the sign up flow, we can then change those information. So the title for this is welcome and the description is this. So I can copy that just to hold on to. So the title is welcome. Then add input. So this is going to be the description. So now we have two fields. If we come back to this, so we have these two handled. So the next one is the button tests, which is going to be either sign in or sign up. So since we are exploring the sign in part, so this is going to be sign in. So the next is the footer tests. So the footer test is in two sections. So here we can have input. We can have the footer test initial part, which is this. Don't have an account, then you go to sign up. So here we have the footer test link. So where does this take us to? So for the footer tests, this can actually be into form because we want to have the test itself as well as the link. And as a result of that, we can explore a more composite data structure. So what I mean here is I can make this input and probably have this as footer, footer link object or something like that. And this is going to be an object of the test itself, which is going to be sign up, then the link, which is going to be slash sign up. Um, yeah. So let's work with this. So if we come back to here, we don't have footer link test actually. So instead we have the footer link object dot test. Then for the link, this is where we're going to make use of our router link. So the router link is going to be the footer link object dot link. Okay, cool. So we have our structure defined for the auth components and let's quickly take a look at what it looks like on the browser. Okay, so not styled at all and yeah, everything still looks okay anyway. So again, I'm going to go ahead and style things up and hopefully we get to see something like this at the end of the day. So yeah, let's work on that. All right, so I've given it the basic styling and let's confirm what this looks like on our browser. So this is what it looks like, nothing special. And as we can see, the form has not been styled. However, it looks like every other one has been styled, which looks good. So for the form, we have a generic style, the form group. And this way we can come back to our SCSS, the styles.scss and style up the form group. So we'll come back here and just like we have for the button, we are going to do that for this. So I'm going to target the inputs and apply some Tailwind CSS. So I actually want to apply this particular styling to the input, the select and the test area. So I can add all of them here. Okay, cool. Then also we need for the label. Then we need for the button. Then finally, we want to apply a margin button of four for the form group itself. All right, cool. So now that we've implemented this, let's see what it's going to look like on our browser. So we have this. And on that note, I think I'm going to give the input itself a height. So let's do that. All right, let's just give it a PY. Okay, cool. Let's see what this looks like. All right, so that's better, that's better. Now maybe we can increase it a little more. Let's type theory. Okay, I think I'm okay with theory and that's fine. So we have this structure, however, it's not looking like what we have here. And that's because we have to finalize things on the login side itself. So let's come back here and come back to our browser. So on the login.html, we are also going to have some styles here, which I'm just going to run through.
So we have some basic structure here. So as we can see, we are going to have a logo here. So on that note, we need to import the logo. So this logo is going to be within this particular class structure, which looks good. So logo pro. All right, so we have this structure. What difference does it make? Let's verify. And we have this already, which looks good. However, we want to control what with these steps because this is looking too small and I don't like that. So yeah, we need this to be a bit wider and we can come back into our code. And without doing anything special, we can apply class to this directly because it's now seen as a regular HTML tag. So here we can have a class and we want this to be W full by default. And if we take a look at our browser, we can see that it's taking up all the space. However, we are not done here. We want this to have a max dash width rather a max width of MD. Okay, cool. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, so now this is wider and this is much more interesting. This is looking good. So nice. So before we proceed to the sign up page, I want us to be able to click on the sign in button and get the information for this. So remember, we are going to be making use of this information on the login site. So we should find a way to be able to transmit that data to the login site. And Angular has a way of doing this. Let's explore that together. So first and foremost, we'll come back to the auth.ts and I want to create a submit function. So here I can have submit and submit is going to take in the event of the form. So yeah, this is going to be any or you can specify the form event or something like that. But I'll have this as any for now. And here I'm going to have console.log events just like that. So now if I come back to the auth.html and to kind of bind a function to your tag or anything like that, we are going to use a bracket. So here we want to have a bracket, then submit. So that's the intention. Then we can bind it to the submit function we just created, which is this. So that's binded to it. However, in Angular, you still have to specify the event itself. And you can specify the event by having a dollar event. Cool. So take note, the dollar event is a kind of definite variable. So it's not as if I'm just writing anything I want. It have to be specific with dollar event. All right, so with that done, let's come back here. Let's open our console. Okay, so if I click on this, it requires me to enter something. So I'll just write thing Brits or something like that. Let's make it an email. Then the password, let's just have um, random stuff. So if I click on sign in, yep, we've not undo that. However, you saw that it tries to show something. So just like with React, we are kind of going that flow already. So technically, this is not the Angular way. I can assure you that Angular has its way of handling form, but I explored that way and I don't like it that much. So I kind of prefer this. So let's come back and prevent the default flow, just like we would do. So events dot prevent default. So that would avoid any reloading. So let's confirm once again. So this random info. And yeah, we have the submit without any reload, which makes sense. Cool. So the next thing I want to do is to have an unchange function that kinds of register all this information and send it to a data structure. Okay, cool. So actually, let me pull up the inspection page and just leave it there because we are going to need it a lot. So back in my code, I'm going to define a type which I'm going to export as well. So export odds input or rather export type odds input, which is going to be email of string, then password of string as well. So now here I can define a data. So data into auth imputes. So email is empty, password is empty. So this is the initial data structure. And now I want to create an unchange function. So unchange. All right, so here is the structure for the unchange. And now we want to update this information. And yep, we've done a lot of set states set data and that's the same pattern here as well however this one is not going to be a set information this is just going to be a direct uh, equals to so here we're going to have this dot data which is equals to 
We're going to have the initial one, then we have the new one. So just like we have with set data. And we are cool. So now whenever we make any change, which we've not really done, so we have to come back here and set that. Okay. So on here, just like we have for the submit, the unchange is also a function. And like I said, whenever you are dealing with a function, it has to be a bracket. So this is going to be change and we can have the unchange. And again, we want to pass the event. Okay, cool. So we want to have this for both. So let's copy this and use for the password as well, or rather the email. So I just find this easier because now we can just define the name and this is going to find what it needs from the unchange function. So now with this done and everything done here, so instead of also logging the event when we try to submit, we would log the data instead. Or rather this dot data. Okay, cool. So now we can come back to our browser. Yep. So here we have this and random password. And if we submit, so now we have the information we need. So we have the email, we have the password, which looks good. That's what we need. So the final step is to kind of, whenever we send this thing, you want to be able to emit it to the login site. So at the moment, we are only testing it on the odd side. And we don't want to use the odd side to perform the login or rather the um, action itself because we really don't want that control. That means we would have a lot of checks and banners to control how things move. For instance, if we are on the login page, we would check that and route to the dashboard. And if we are on the sign up page, then we have to check that. So we want to avoid all those checks and just perform the operation as it would be. So yeah, we are done on this. Let's come back to our code. So here we have an input so far, as we can see, and inputs allow us send information from the component side into the component itself. So more like a parameter or props in React. However, we want to also have an output. So an output is us saying we want to send something out to whoever is using the components. So in this case, the parent. So let's define an output. And for the output, we want to call it on submit, which means whenever we submit, we want to output this function. And this is going to be an emitter. So I'm going to call it new emitter. So event emitter. And here we're going to pass in the auth input as the parameter we are sending to the event emitter. So now instead of console login here, we want to emit. So this is going to be this dot on submit dot emit this dot data. So whenever we submit, we want to emit this data and that's what we want to do. So now we can come back to our login.ts. We are going to have an unsubmit function. So here we're going to have unsubmit. And this is going to take in data of type auth data or rather auth inputs. And we have access to it here because we exported the function or the, the type. Okay. So cool. We are going to log the data here, which is fine. However, if we come back to the login.html itself, here we want to have the submit function. So on submit, so whenever we call the on submit, we want to assign it to this function we have here. So let's not uh, mess up the name. This particular on submit is the variable name defined on the auth um, component itself, this particular one. Or maybe it's better still, we can call it event submit, something like that, so that it's much more clearer. Cool. 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 So now on the login side, this is going to now become event submit. And whenever we click on event submit, we want to dump that data on the unsubmit function we have here. And because this is going to have an event, we are going to send the event as well. So it has a parameter and the parameter in this case is the event we are sending. So remember, we are emitting an event here. Okay, cool. So now with all that done, let's see if we're able to get this information on the login side. So coming back to the browser, everything seems to still be working. So let's have this the email and let's have random password. And if we click sign in, now we have the data from the login side. And with that, we can perform any operation we want to perform on the login side, which looks good. So yeah, I think we have the basic structure of what we need. So let's clear things up by setting up the sign up so that we can click here and go to the sign up page. So I'll close this. 
I'll come back to my code. I'll duplicate this. And this is going to become register. Cool. And yeah, this as well. Then this as well. So, yep. So in here, we want to have some configuration that shows that this is a register component. We'll get to that later on. But first thing first, let's clean up the component part itself. So here we have register. And this is going to become register.html. So every other thing still remains the same. So we'll close this out. So come back to the routes, duplicate this. And this is going to be the sign up. And this is going to be register components. Okay, cool. So, so back in the register.html. So in here, we want to define some variables and as such, we can maybe bring this down so we have things cleaned up so down here we want to have the title i think the title is welcome actually i think i might have made a mistake so if we take a look at the browser at the moment we have welcome create your account and this is wrong for the sign up this should be for the sign in so yeah this should be the sign in um content so let me just copy this and i'll just change that to welcome back So coming back to the outside, actually here. So this should be welcome back. And this should be this. Okay, cool. So now coming back to the register, this should be welcome. The description should be create your account to get started. Then the button tests would be sign up. Then the footer tests would be already have an account. Then for the footer object, this is an object. And as a result of that, it will be binded like this. So footer link objects. So now we can enter the object information. If we just leave it as this, then it's going to see it as a string, which is wrong. So to see it as an object, then we have to bind it with this square uh, bracket. All right, cool. So that's the structure for the register, I believe. So now we can come back to the browser. Yeah, sign in. So this in should be small letter. Let's correct that. Save. Okay, so that's better. So now if we click on sign up, it takes us to the sign up page. And we can do the same thing just like we did for the login. So let's try that. And if we click sign up, we get the information. And because this information are on different components, we can perform whatever operation we want to perform in an isolated manner. All right, cool. So looks like we have things in place. Okay, so this is going to log in, which is wrong. And this should be signing. So let's quickly correct that. So coming back to the register. So this should go into sign in. And this should be sign in. All right. So let's test one more time. So sign in, we can go to sign in and sign up, we can go to sign up, which looks good. So there we have it for the layout of our authentication pages. And we're going to round up here for today. So in the next episode, we'll be integrating this with our endpoints. So remember, we already have all the endpoints we would need. So then we are going to explore the service section of Angular, how to make use of service. And I think we've kind of covered most of what Angular has to offer already, aside from the form anyways. So there we have it, guys. Bye for now and see you in the next episode.